All right, this is exam three for physics 201, fall 2012. Which of the following is an example of a non-conservative force? All right, well, gravity and magnetism are both field forces, uh, and those are conservative. They do conserve energy, but friction does not conserve energy, so it is non-conservative. So C, mass and velocity of a ball are tripled. Kinetic energy is increased by a factor of what? Kinetic energy is one-half m v squared. If I triple my velocity and triple my mass, it gives me a factor of 3 times 9, which is 27. So that's D. The unit of work, joule, is dimensionally which is the same of these? All right, well, work equals force times displacement. That's newtons times meters. That's D. Which of the following is a form of energy associated with an object's motion? That would be kinetic energy. System with two moving objects. When a collision occurs between the objects, which of these? So the total, total kinetic energy is always conserved. That's not true. In fact, unless there are only field forces involved, the kinetic energy isn't conserved. Momentum is always conserved, regardless of the type of collision. And so those two are wrong. So the answer is B. Momentum of an object is tripled. What is its kinetic energy changed by? If the mass stays the same, same. Potential is mass times velocity. So if I triple my momentum, that means I'm tripling the velocity. Kinetic energy is 1 half m v squared. If I'm tripling the, this velocity, that gives me a factor of 9. So that's d, 9. System of particles has a momentum of 0. Which of these statements is true about the kinetic energy of the system? If the momentum is 0, that either means that the velocity of all the particles equals 0, or it means that I have particles that are moving with equal momenta in opposite directions, so that the momenta cancel. Uh, so it could be either one of those. We don't know, so there's not enough information. That's d for number 7. Bouncy ball and a bean bag, each with the same mass, follow the floor from the same height. That means they both have the same speed when they hit the ground. Which of these statements about the force and part of the floor is true? Uh, all right, if I drop the bouncy ball, it goes to the floor, goes down, comes back up again. It bounces up. However, the bean bag goes down, and it stays on the floor. It doesn't bounce. Because this ball bounces, it has a greater change in momentum, so there's a greater force since my force is proportional to my change in momentum. So that would be A for number 8. Kaiser sits on the outer rim of merry-go-round. Chad sits midway. His linear velocity is what? It's 1 half. I know that V is equal to omega R. Because it's a rigid body, they both have the same radius. However, Chad has half. Excuse me, they both have the same omega. Chad has half the radius of Kaiser. So he has half the velocity. That's B for number 9. Ball is tied to a string. You whirl around in a circle. String. My string is providing the centripetal force. That centripetal force is always towards the center of the circle. Uh, it is not tangent. It's always B, not away from the center, so it's not D. So the answer is B for number 10. Grindstone is spinning at this rate, 8.3 revolutions per second. Just wanted to convert it to radians per second. In one revolution, there are 2 pi radians. So 8.3 times 2 pi. You 52. So C. Object at rest begins to rotate with an angular acceleration. If it rotates to an angle theta and time t, what angle to rotate in time half t? Well, I know that theta is related to t by this expression. Alright, but I know that omega naught is zero because it's initially at rest, so it gets rid of that term. So this simplifies. One half alpha times t squared. Alright, if it rotates through theta in time t, through time half t is going to rotate to through a quarter theta, so that's C. Right, this figure shows four identical L-shaped objects. Each rotates about the axis drawn with a thin black line. All right, so I'm looking for the moment of inertia. Remember, I is defined as the sum of mr squared. So I want to look for the object with the most mass at the biggest radius, and that would be C is the biggest one. Now that gets rid of this answer and this answer right off. So C is the biggest. All right. We can also see that situations A and B are identical, All right? So um, that would tell me that A equals B. And situation D has a moment of inertia that's bigger than A or B, but less than C. So it's going to look like this. 
that is answer C. Which of these is basic units for moment of inertia? Well, it's MR squared, so it's kilogram meter squared. Kilogram meter squared. I is the sum of MR squared. It's kilograms meter squared. C. Two spheres have the same mass. One's aluminum, so it's big, because it's less dense than the gold sphere, which is small. So this one has a bigger R, yet the same mass. So it has a bigger moment of inertia for A. All right, uniform solid sphere can rotate about central point in any direction. First, I just want to know what is the torque. All right, this was worth 10 points, this part. Torque is equal to R cross F. R is, uh, it gives the coordinates. These are from the origin. So uh, because, let's get this soon, origin. So R is 2I plus 1J crossed with the vector f, which is given here, 12i minus 2k. Alright, so I do foil. Uh, 2 times 12 is 24i cross i. Outer is 2 times negative 2. It's minus 4i cross k. Uh, inner 1 times 12 is 12 j cross i. And uh, what was the last? Oh, 1 last for foil. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 j cross k. Alright, my i cross i term goes away because i cross i equals 0. And I need to know what these cross products are. This is i, j, k i, j, and k. So i cross k, if I let my fingers go in the direction of i, they fold towards k. My thumb goes in the negative j direction. So I'm getting 4j. That is negative 4 times negative j. This goes to negative j. Um, j cross i, let my fingers go in the direction of j, fold towards i, I get negative k. So this is negative k. And then j cross k is i. So I get 4j minus 12k uh, minus 2i. And that's in Newton meters. Let's check my key here. I think that on some of yours, you might have had this incorrect, and I didn't count it wrong. So if you did that, 12k, yeah. Some of you, you might have had this incorrect, but I didn't count it wrong, because I had it wrong in my key. Alright, so that's the torque. That was worth 10 points. That's in vector notation. Alright, now after 3 seconds, we want to know the kinetic energy of the sphere. Okay, a couple things we need to do here. First, we need to find the moment of inertia for this sphere. It's 2 fifths mr squared. You have to look on your chart there. Uh, it's 2 fifths times the mass, which is 30 kilograms times the radius squared. It's 2 meters squared, and that was uh, 48 kilogram meters squared. Each of these, by the way, was worth three points, each of these little subsections. So you had to find I, and you had to find the magnitude of the torque. There are a couple different ways you could do this, uh, but this is probably the easiest. Use the Pythagorean theorem, that's 4 squared plus 12 squared plus 2 squared. That's finding the magnitude of that torque vector. You get 12.8 newton meters. Those were three points as well. Uh, then you can find alpha, which is torque over I. Uh, torque is 12.8 over 48, which is 0.27 radians per second squared. And then you find omega. Is alpha times t. I know this because omega naught equals zero, so that term goes away. It's 0.27 times three seconds, which is 0.8 radians per second. That was worth three points. And then the kinetic energy, bringing it all together, is one half i omega squared, uh, one half of 48 times 0.8 squared. is 15 joules. 
don't think anybody had the right answer number wise. A lot of you got the steps right, just had little minor mistakes throughout. All right, a four kilogram mess kit sliding on a frictional surface explodes into two different sized parts. So I have this mess kit traveling along and then it explodes into two pieces going in different directions. Well, I know it's original velocity of the mess kit. So I say my initial momentum equals my final momentum. My initial momentum is going to be the mass, which is four kilograms times VI. And it's going to equal uh, the final momentum, which is going to be 3 kilograms, times its velocity, which is given right here, minus 3i plus 4j plus 6k, plus 1 kilogram, that's the other piece, 6i minus 10j minus 2k. Alright, um... I can combine my i and j terms, distribute these, the 3 and the 1 through the vectors, and I get something that looks like this. vi equals uh, negative 9i plus 12j plus 18k plus 6i minus 10j minus 2k, all divided by 4. Add like i and j terms, i, j, and k terms, and divide by 4, and I get vi in vector notation is 3 quarters, excuse me, negative 3 quarters i, plus a half j, plus 4k. It's in meters per second. Remember, many of you got that correct. Basic momentum problem. All right, bug through the metal collar, slides back and forth like this. Uh, there's the mass, magnetic force that acts over a particular distance. The force is given by here. All right, we first want to know what is the bug's total energy at the top of the bowl. Let's give you some idea. Each of these was worth uh, six for parts A through C, and two points for the last part. So we're looking at six points, six points, six points, and two points. For the total energy for part A, it just has potential energy at the top, so it's just M times G times H. Uh, that is 0.01. It's the mass of the bug times 9.8 times 0.11 meters. And I get the total energy to be 0 0.011 joules. All right, for part B, how much energy does the bug lose when it crosses through the magnetic field? Uh, work done by that force is equal to the interval of f dx. Uh, the force is given by this function, 2x. So it's the integral of 2x dx. And these are going to be, the limits of integration are from 0 to 0 0.015, because that's the distance over which it acts. That's going to be uh, x, 2x squared over 2, from 0 to 0 0.015 which is uh, 2.25 times 10 to the minus 4. If I do those limits, that's in joules. For part C, what is the bug speed at the bottom on its first pass just after it goes across the magnetic patch? So at the bottom, it has only kinetic energy, all right, which is equal to this amount minus that amount. So its kinetic energy is 0 0.011 minus the energy that it lost. And then that's equal to one half m v squared. Put in my mass of 0.01 kilograms, and I solve for v, and I find that v is 1.5 meters per second. And then finally, in part d, uh, I want to know how how long does it take to lose that energy? I just take the total energy, 0 0.011 joules, divided by the amount that he loses each time. And that gives me 48.8. So he goes through 48 times. And on that 49th time, he stops on the patch. All right, number 19. Y'all did pretty well on that one, most of all. 
uh, I have this man with a moment of inertia of 100 kilogram meters per second squared, and he's standing on the rotating platform. So this guy. All right, initially nobody's moving. All right, but then the guy starts swinging this ball overhead. All right, in one direction, uh, clockwise direction actually. So he's going. Well, it sort of depends how you look at it. It doesn't really matter. He's going in that direction. Let's say. Now I want to know the magnitude and direction of the man's angular speed because he's on this rotating table. If this is going in this direction, then this is now going to go in this direction. So I have this is a moment uh, angular momentum, Li equals Lf. Now initially they're both zero, zero, zero rotation, so there's no angular momentum. And then finally, uh, the man has a certain angular momentum. I'm going to call this Lm. And the mass, so I'll call this a ball, that he's swinging over his head has an angular momentum. Right, so zero is equal to the uh, I, the man, omega of the man, plus I of the ball, omega of the ball. I of the man is 100. It's given explicitly in the problem. Uh, omega is what I want to find. Plus, I of the ball is mr squared. We just treat it like a discrete particle. That's uh, 1 times 2 squared, 1 kilogram times 2 meters squared, which of course is 4. So it's going to be 4 times omega ball, which is uh, 1.2. All right. And then I find. As this guy rotates the string over his head, this ball on a string, he rotates in the opposite direction. I can find that. I get uh, 4.8 over 100. 0.048 revolutions per second. It's negative, but I was just really looking for the... Oh, so the magnitude is 0.048, and because it's negative, the way I've drawn this, I didn't count off if you didn't have the direction, but the direction would be counterclockwise. Uh, all right, but I didn't count off. I don't think I'm not sure if anybody really put a direction, but I did ask for it actually. It's right there. All right. Um, on the exam, if I ask this, I might be more particular about the direction, but I'll be more explicit about what is the direction that he's swinging the ball. That's it. Yeah, there's the answers to the multiple choice.